It's working. Look. I can't believe this. This is awesome because I have been learning to code for about a month. I thought I would need at least three months to get anywhere. But I ended up coding my own app in just about a month. In this video, I'm going to show exactly how that happened and share key lessons that make it possible. I'm on a mission to launch my own startup. But I have one gigantic problem. I'm not a developer. In the last video, I tried to create this app with a no-code tool in three days. It's kind of work. It was more stressful than I expected. And yet, I still didn't like the outcome. With no-code tool, you still need basic understanding of programming. So I figured if I'm gonna invest time to learn something new anyway, I might as well learn the real coding and gain the long-term benefits. That was when I realized the shortcut wasn't really a shortcut at all. So I decided to learn to code. Little did I know, the biggest challenge wasn't the coding itself. I spent days asking myself, can I do this? Should I even try? Am I smart enough to do this? Can I really create a functioning app by myself? And the list go on. But what is my choice? Give up? That is not an option. The thing is, this isn't the first time I try. Last time, I gave up after three days. But this time I did one thing differently. So if you are considering learning to code, make sure you don't make the same critical mistake I did. Before you start, make sure you have a project in mind, a clear outcome you want to create. It could be something you want to create from scratch, or if you don't have an idea yet, I recommend picking a software you like and try to recreate it. That way you know exactly where you're aiming. And once you nail down what you are going to build, answering the next two questions become easy. Which programming language you should learn? In my case, I want to create a native mobile app. So. I pick Swift and with a clear outcome, it tells you what do you need to know to create your project. In my case, the data must be stored somewhere, somehow. The user must be able to edit those data and only their data. So some kind of authentication, an intuitive UI, push notification, widget and cross device sync. It also tells you the width and the depth of knowledge you need I want to create an app, a functional first version, to test the idea potential. I'm not trying to get a job as a software engineer. If you are, you probably have to go deeper than I did. Now that I have a clear outcome in mind and a rough roadmap of what I need to learn, I know what I'm looking for. With a quick Google search, I saw a lot of comments on Reddit recommending the 100 days of Swift UI. It sounds really good and it's free. And that was how I found the key to overcome my self-doubt. I made an agreement with myself by setting an input goal. I'm going to spend at least one hour a day learning and an output goal. I will stick with this 100 days course until I finish it. The key is I'm focusing on input and output, the things I can control. After the 100 days, I will re-evaluate whether I will try to create my own app or I will have to find some other ways. Learning to code can be overwhelming. There are so many things you have to learn. But I realized something, and it was the third key that unlocked the world of learning to code for me. And it's unconventional. The weird thing is, I came to this understanding from learning my third language, German. We learn languages to communicate, human-to-human -human communication. When you learn a new language, you need to learn vocabulary. Now, vocabulary alone isn't enough. You can't communicate properly without grammar. And to communicate effectively, you need clarity on what you want to say. The same is true for programming language. We learn programming languages to communicate to a computer. You need to know the vocabulary, how to put those words together to create a meaningful sentences, also known as syntax, and what is it that you want the computer to do. It's called programming language for a reason. But how does this help you learn coding? For me, I get overwhelmed when I feel like there are a million things to do. Seeing it this way helped me chunk the learning into a manageable bucket. 
Instead of thinking about the million things I have to learn, I only have to learn three buckets. The vocabulary, the grammar, and the logic. This perspective gives me a sense of control. I can manage three buckets. So I ended up spend about three hours per day learning. Someday I get obsessive and spend up to 10 hours. I just finished the course. I'm quite proud of myself to be honest, but following a tutorial doesn't mean I can code. At this point, it's like I know how to introduce myself to say what's my name, where I'm from, but the minute the other person responds, I would be completely lost <laughs> and froze. Um, there is a follow-up course. It looks very promising. It's covered a lot of topics that I want to include in my app. The question is, am I using this as a procrastination tactic? At the same time, I wouldn't get very far with my current knowledge, so I decided to take the extended course. Luckily, I did not get stuck in the procrastination by learning loop this time. The course has tons of useful stuff, and it's got me so excited to start implementing my own app. And that brings me to... It's working! And it has been only about a month. I plan to spend at least three months learning now. I would not apply for a job as an iOS engineer. I'm pretty far from that. <laughs> but I coded this myself and it's work. Let me show you what I got. You can create, read, update, and delete item. The data is stored securely in your iCloud account. You can assign due date and view the item in different ways. Group by goal, week, or day. And so far, I'm using only native Swift UI component. Swift UI is a very beginner-friendly programming language. So don't you dare doubt yourself. However, there is one more piece of the puzzle. Without it, I probably wouldn't get this far. Find out what it is in these videos.